Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be what the narcissist takes away from people. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the narcissist tries to take away from so much from people and they accomplish much of their to-do list there, but they don't take away everything. And that is why the healing path is a place we are all on because the narcissist did not take us down for the count. They tried, but they did not succeed and we are putting ourselves back together. But what the narcissist tries to take away from people, some things would include relationships, maybe even with your immediate family members or your kids or your stepkids or your friends or your colleagues or your neighbors or associates or people that you've known for virtually your life, maybe even your own parents. The narcissist wants to drive wedges between you and people, specifically people that are there for you as a support system. And that's why so frequently on the channel, I mention that when you were in the relationship, you became an extension of the narcissist. You lost your identity to the narcissist. Many people can't wrap their head around that when they hear those two lines in the beginning because they can't fathom what, what, what I'm talking about. Well, when you lived it, you understand that what you did is you did just those two things. You put the narcissist way high up on a pedestal and you were their unpaid helper. You were their walking apology. You were their sounding board. You were the person who did things for them. You were running errands. You were paying bills, etc. All the things that I talk about in the channel, but you did that to the detriment of yourself and you put your life on hold because you were in the devaluation stage and you were existing in that narcissistic fog, a place where the narcissist trapped you and they kept you. But other things the narcissist wants to take from you, aside of those relationships, think about the memories that you did create with these people. Think about the memories that you could have created with these people. Again, let's go back to kids. Well, maybe you raised the kids, and maybe you were in their life for a period of time, and no longer are you in their lives. Well, what happens there? The narcissist drove a wedge, probably parental alienated you from the kids, and they are now acting like they're the parents of the year, and they're acting like you are the villain or the bad person. Nothing, and I mean nothing, could have been further from the truth. Usually the narcissist is not the parent of the year, and usually you are the good person, but they're trying to isolate the children from you, and they're trying to trap the children and groom them and brainwash them and have them become mini-me's, etc. But all these things I'm talking about are things the narcissist wants to take away from people. Relationships are a huge part of it. They want to take away your memories of the relationships of the people you once were associated with. Again, let's talk about extended family members. Maybe you vacationed all over the globe and you paid or helped uh, accomplish these arrangements or vacations with the extended family. Well, you're no longer talking with the extended family because they are connected with the narcissist. And they made it crystal clear when you were discarded that they would take the side of the narcissist because that's what they do. But all of these memories that you had, holidays, birthdays, barbecues, trips and everything, those are all taken from you also. Did you experience those? Of course you did. Do you have good memories in some of those? Yes, you do. But most of those were blown up by the narcissist anyway. And the narcissist knew what they were doing when they were trying to drive wedges between you and their immediate family members or your ex-in-laws and vacations and holidays. Let's talk about that for a minute. Every vacation virtually or holiday or birthday or event was ruined. Now, was all, were all of them ruined? No, but many of them had a twist or a nuance to them that you couldn't fully enjoy yourself because usually you were running around doing something because the narcissist, not only can they not sit still, but they could not have you sit still and just be yourself. So you would be doing things on these vacations. Perhaps you had a docket or an agenda filled with plans that you had to do on day one, two, three, day 15. And what did you do? You never really got to enjoy or take in the ambiance of the vacation spot where you were. What you were doing is you were just running around, doing this, getting the, check, getting the endless to-do list checked off. Okay, we did that, now we have to go here. We did that, now we have to do here. Well, there's no time for just being. Remember, the narcissist cannot just be. They don't have that luxury and that privilege. They need distraction, and they get distractions from their smartphone, from supply, from pets, from events, from vacations, from anything, virtually from Amazon. And this is all how the narcissist operates. They don't have that twitch. They don't have that mindset of just being present in the moment, enjoying what they have. They're on a constant quest, searching for something they will never find, which is, first of all, the, the perfect person, the perfect relationship, the large amount of money that they want in their bank account, how many homes they want, et cetera, businesses, but that will never be enough because the narcissist is a bottomless pit. They can never be satiated. But what they wanted to take away from you back then was vacation time. 
and quality time with the kids or quality time with extended family members, friends, etc. These are very important because when you are in the narcissistic relationship and you're isolated in your own home and you're not being listened to, you're not being respected, you're not being treated properly, it is a very challenging place to be, to say the least, because people don't look at you the way that you should be looked at. You're being devalued left, right, and center. And the narcissist has already used the smear campaign when you're in this situation to drive wedges between you and your reality. And this is what they do on purpose because they don't want you ever figuring out A, who they are, B, seen behind the mask, D, healing, and E, going no contact, blocking them, deleting them, removing all flying monkeys and people associated with them. But that is the path. That's what you must do. If you've identified that you're in one of these relationships and you are still in it right now and you have the ability to remove yourself, I strongly suggest you do it because one minute in these relationships, once you know what kind of relationship it is, is one minute too long. Now, all these things I'm sharing with you, they are pivotal parts of what these people want to do, what they want to take away from you. What about your hobbies? Let's think about that. Maybe you used to go skiing and surfing and you like to read books. Well, the narcissist made crystal clear that you wouldn't be reading anytime soon because you need to be active doing things. Go dig a ditch, go dig worms, go be productive, do something, rake the leaves, wash the dishes, pay the bills. There's no time for reading and just being because that's just too peaceful. It's too enjoyable. You're, you're educating yourself and you're enjoying your time. That's not what they want. What they want is to disrupt your time. They want to steal your energy and they want to make sure that in that example, that the book reading, you don't enjoy it and you don't do it. And eventually you don't buy a book and you don't read a book, but that's not what you're doing right now. Right now you're putting yourself back together and you're understanding that you can read any book you want to. You can take a class, teach a class, read a book, write a book. You can do anything you want to do because you're not with these people any longer. But the narcissist tried to take that away from you. Same thing with skiing or surfing. Okay, so you're an outdoor person. You like to move your body and stay in shape. That's great, I think it's beautiful. But what did the narcissist say back then? Well, why would you be skiing? That's very expensive, you shouldn't be doing that. Who has money to do that? I don't have money to go skiing. You shouldn't be doing that either. Next thing you know, you're guilted into not skiing and the ski, the skis stay in the closet or in the garage for the next five or six years. Did you pick them back up again when you were with the narcissist? Of course not, they, didn't, they wouldn't allow you. But once you got toxic free and narcissistic free, maybe you put the skis on and you went down the slopes and you remembered how great you were at it and you rec reclaimed your skiing. Same thing with surfing. You like to go surfing. Well, the narcissist there would tell you something like, yeah, maybe surfing isn't the most expensive sport, but you're not spending time with me. Why are you always out on the waves? Why are you doing that? You should be with me. And you're scratching your head saying, yeah, but when I'm with you, you don't want to be with me. And when I'm not with you, you want to be with me. What, what gives? What's going on here? The narcissist is trying to stop you from going surfing. It's with any hobby. It's with anything. Think about what I'm mentioning to you. The narcissist needs new shiny objects. And what they want to do with you or wanted to do with you was keep you stuck and trapped. They wanted you existing in that loop of manipulation, in that deep end of destruction, in the pool of toxicity. That's where they wanted you. And they did an A plus job keeping you there for a period of time until something broke, something snapped, which was the relationship. Either A, they discarded you, and if they did, my heart goes out to you, or B, you wised up and ended it yourself, and you had an exit plan. You developed and created an exit plan, which is imperative once you've identified you're in a toxic narcissistic relationship. You need to have an exit plan. And I will tell you right now, I'm gonna create a couple videos on this, maybe even a series, because it's instrumental. I started mentioning exit plans two years ago in the videos that I created, because that's what I had to do. And believe me when I tell you, it works if you actually put your focus and your mind and attention to what is important, which is removing yourself from the relationship instead of giving those people all of your energy and it's going out the window. But as I'm mentioning with the thumbnail, what the narcissist tries to take away from people, hobbies are another one. What about your health? Let's say that you had a health concern, maybe a couple of them. Well, first of all, you probably had those health concerns when you were in the relationship with these people because they are putting so much pressure on you and the weight of that relationship is on your shoulders. It's not on the narcissist's shoulders. They do, they do virtually nothing in the relationship other than consume time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, everything. But let's say you had health concerns. If you did, what happened there is, was the narcissist there for you when you had to go to the hospital or doctor visits? Or did they actually attend? Maybe they did attend the doctor visits with you, but were they sitting in a chair on their smartphone getting your replacement, watching your life implode, or getting diagnosed with some kind of illness or something that you did not even imagine that would befall upon yourself? This is what they do. And then when they went, let's pretend you had a surgery, a major surgery, maybe even a detached retina. Well, when you did that, you had to have surgery because it's your retina and you can't see out of your eye. Did the narcissist loan you money or help you get there, help you get uh, that surgery accomplished? 
No, they probably didn't. They probably didn't lift a finger. They probably watched you and your life implode because they were getting pleasure out of your pain. And they were watching you run around trying to scrap up the money to get emergency surgery one day. And sure enough, you did it. But the narcissist who had a chock full bank account didn't lift a finger. Why would they? It's too easy. And if they actually cared about somebody, they would do that. They would actually use their money to spend on people, especially when it comes to health concerns. But that's not what these people do. What these people do is they just watch you and they watch you up close and they watch you from afar and they want to watch how much pressure you can handle until something breaks. Again, the narcissistic relationship, it has, it has an expiration date. We now know that each and every one of these has an expiration date. And back then when the narcissist was taking so much away from you when you were in the relationship, you didn't know what was going on because you weren't taught this in school. You couldn't wrap your head around the, the fact that the person who professed that they loved you actually was your worst enemy and you were sleeping with the enemy and you were being gaslit every day, stonewalled, given the silent treatment, enduring the smear campaign, triangulated, which is my least favorite thing these people do. You're experiencing blame shifting, projection, mirroring. You were caught up in the trauma bond, not a good place to be, but you didn't know where you were. You just knew that things were getting worse and worse. They were not improving, they were deteriorating, and the narcissist was around you less and less. Now, the reason why that was, it's because they're getting your replacement. They're spending more and more time with the coworker, wink, wink, that turned into the new supply. That's what they do. That's why they go from person to person, place to place, business to business, town to town, city to city, country to country, looking for unsuspecting people to take from. And that is why the narcissist can't sit still. That is why they're constantly moving. That is why they're on their smartphones all the time. That is why they don't care about anybody, including the new supply right now. The only person the narcissist cares about is themselves. It's abundantly clear. Now, back then you didn't know what you were up against. So let's say you got married or entered a relationship with this person. You couldn't figure out that once those bed wedding bells rang that things were different because now the narcissist knew that they had you and you were going nowhere because nobody or very few people would get divorced right after they got married, meaning the next day or a week later, but some people do. And that's a clear indication that they're in a toxic relationship or perhaps they shouldn't have married. Either way, you didn't know that back then. You thought that you could improve the relationship. You thought you could get back to the yet euphoric slash love bomb stage. That never happened. It couldn't happen. You got little micro doses of fake empathy, of fake love, of fake anything that would keep you in the relationship longer so the narcissist could continue to do what? That's right. So they could continue to take from you. That's what they were doing each and every day. It was almost like a magic act, if you will. Look to your left and then over here on the right, I'm gonna take everything from you. Look to the right, on the left, I'm gonna, it's a game of misdirection. It's a game of ma manipulation. It's a game to the narcissist. Now remember, this is your life. Your life is not a game. Your life is meant to be lived and enjoyed and to be experienced and relished and cherished and honored. That's not how these people look at life. They look at other people's lives as opportunities to destroy, to drive wedges in between them and anything that matters, to take what is theirs. Because at their core, the narcissist is envious and jealous of virtually everybody and they're anxiety riddled and they believe in their tiny little mind. They ac actually do believe that they're entitled to anything this planet has to offer without any consequence. That's why they wanna take from people. And that's what they wanna take, take, take. And when they're done taking, what do they wanna do? That's right, they wanna take more. That is exactly what the narcissist does throughout life. They take from their own kids, from their own parents, from their siblings, from their coworkers, neighbors, any way they possibly can. And they don't ever have a conscious about it. They don't ever think, wow, I shouldn't have done that. Let's talk about inheritance for a moment. Let's say that you're, one of your, your siblings, it turns out to be one of these people. Well, the um, will has been written and you're supposed to get X percent of it. And you're, let's say you have two people, it's you and your brother or sister, and your brother or sister is a toxic person. Well, what are they gonna do? Many times they're gonna move in with the ill parent and claim that they're, they're nursing them back to health or helping them. And they're gonna tell you that you haven't lifted a finger. And what will they do many times, not always, but many times or at times, they will have that will be changed into, so they receive all of the financial rewards or the assets, basically you're written out of the will. And then when your parents or whoever it is passes, heaven forbid they do, but we're all gonna go one day, then you're expecting to get some money or some assets or property or something, not that you need it, but that's what your parent told you. And then you look and lo and behold, the will has been written, you've been written out of it. And what happened there? Well, your brother or sister moved in a little bit after the illness was happening with your parent and they had the will changed, wrote themselves all the way in and wrote you out. What did they do there? They took, that's what these people want to do. 
They all they want to do is consume and take as much as they possibly can. So get the message and understand this. That's why you need to have boundaries. That's why you have to really keep your circle close. That's why you need to not overshare, not be a people pleaser, not do any, not listen to people's words, rather pay attention to their actions. Actions speak louder than words. They sincerely do. And above all, keep your silence, which means I'm not suggesting don't go talk to people. I'm saying if you have information, figure out if you wanna share it or not. But remember, a lot of people out there don't have your best interest at heart and the narcissist is at the top of that list. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. I hope you like the background because I found a special place, which is amazing, and it's sunny out here. So I'm going to go enjoy my walking meditation. Enjoy yourselves. I love you all. God bless you. And remember, pay it forward. And if you're having a challenging day today, my hope is you're not, but if you are, stay the course. Continue to heal and understand that where you are today is not where you will be tomorrow or in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Things do improve, but it takes work. It takes patience. It takes calmness. It takes being centered, stoic, resilient, and strong. And, and I'm going to say that this one more time. I shared it in yesterday's video. If anybody's interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me, drop an email at narcdailyvideos at gmail.com. That's narcdailyvideos at gmail.com. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye. It is so beautiful.